Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at ownership and control of the media, focusing on traditional Marxist views of the media. Traditional Marxist views of the media, often referred to as the instrumental or manipulative approach, argue that rather than being a reflection of the audience's tastes and attitudes, media is dictated by those that own the media. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Marxists argue that the media is controlled by the ruling class. As most of the media is controlled by wealthy owners, it allows them to use the media to dictate the political ideas of society, which largely reflect their own position in the ruling class. Traditional Marxists suggest that they employ people who reinforce the ideology of the ruling class, and that journalists have limited ability to pursue stories that conflict with the ideology of their owners, Journalists are censored by editors who are instructed on what they can and cannot report. One of the key Marxist theorists in the media is Ralph Miliband. He argued that the media played an important role in creating false class consciousness in society and promotes the ideas of the ruling class onto its audience. He argued that those who own and control the media have similar tastes, attributes and political ideologies and that they will intervene in the day-to-day -day running of newspapers and other media in order to ensure that this is passed on to the audience. Miliband suggested this is done through adopting simplified positions on complex issues, limiting the amount of information that the audience receives and often creating partisan views that encourage the audience to agree with the source of the media. This can be evidence in reporting of alternatives to capitalist society, such as the reporting of socialism as being part of the loony left, or ideas about social justice being criticised as part of cancel culture or being part of the woke left. For Miliband, the audience is a passive recipient of information that internalises the information that they are presented with, as if it were fact, and it fails to critically analyse the source of the information or to consider an alternative view. As a result, media owners can control the masses, who will accept this information blindly. Another traditional Marxist idea relates to the ability of owners to dictate the content that is presented, and how it is presented through their media. Owners have the ability to pick and choose which events or stories that they broadcast or publish, and these often present a one-sided account of social issues. For example, media sources rarely put a human face on issues of inequality, instead largely supplying data on inequality rather than discussing the impacts of inequality. The use of statistics in poverty, offending and victimisation rarely reveals the true picture of what is happening. For example, civil unrest in the late 1970s and 80s failed to acknowledge the institutional racism and structural inequalities that people faced but rather it focused on numbers of arrests and the police officers that were injured, which fits in with an ideology of protest as being due to the cultural backgrounds of those taking part. A further example of how the ruling class passes on ideologies is through entertainment. This is a means of distracting individuals from wider social issues, providing a respite from the alienation and exploitation that individuals face in the workplace, and this serves the needs of the ruling class as it prevents revolt. Owners do this as it preserves their own position of power, according to Marxists. One of the main points that Marxists make about the ownership and control of the media is how few people own and control the media. In 2021, just three media companies controlled the publication of 90% of print newspapers in circulation each month. This concentration of ownership allows media owners to dictate stories and report on events that serve the needs of capitalism, so advertising goods, promoting consumption. This is done through lifestyle articles that focus on must-have goods or focusing on celebrity lifestyles and promoting individuals to purchase the clothes that the celebrities wear. Politically, the concentration of the media into a few hands also helps promote ideas that align with those of the ruling class. Political relationships that owners have with others in the ruling class mean they are less likely to put forward critical views of those with a similar ideology. 
For example, positive views of prime ministers such as Boris Johnson being put forward without critical analysis of policies or conduct. A second example is promoting critical views of protests such as climate change or protests against racial discrimination. Protesters are perceived as wild and unruly rather than promoting ideas of social equality. If this were the case, it may lead others to challenge the control of the ruling class. Curran found evidence of many media owners being involved in the day-to-day -day affairs of newspapers, micromanaging articles that were produced and ensuring that the news items that might cause embarrassment to advertisers and political allies were hidden. In the UK, the majority of the press, particularly the tabloid press, adopt conservative values and so naturally will support the ideologies of the Conservative Party. This means they're rarely critical of government policy and the decisions of Conservative ministers. Furthermore, there are well-documented links between those in power and those who own and run the media. For example, Tony Blair famously courted Rupert Murdoch for support in his election in 1997 with New Labour, whilst David Cameron was friends with Rebecca Brooks, editor of both The Sun and The News of the World, and these publications produced favourable reports and stories about the Conservatives in the run-up to the election. This demonstrates the power that media owners have, and how they reinforce the ideas of the ruling classes. In evaluating Marxist ideas, support can be seen through examining the limited ownership of media sources by few global franchises, whilst independent media often only has a limited circulation in comparison. However, pluralists are not convinced by Marxist arguments, suggesting that media is a business and that newspapers and television produce content that reflects the needs of the audience, rather than their owners and the elite in society. A further criticism of Marxism is the idea that the audience is passive. In the digital age, content that is critical of society is widely available and accessed by many people. Political websites such as Novara Media, The Canary and Breitbart News all offer critical views of mainstream politics and have reasonable circulation figures which suggest that the audience is less passive than was previously perceived. Finally, neo-Marxists suggest that while the media does convey ruling class messages and ideology, they suggest that this is a result of those who make day-to-day -day decisions rather than owners. They suggest editors and journalists are largely middle class, and they report on their own interests, which are often aligned with those of the owners of media. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on ownership and control of the media, focusing on Marxist approaches. Thanks for watching.